Okay, we've got another problem that was sent to us. This one comes all the way from Slovenia. Just to show you that calculus is not only used to torture American math students. This problem will tax you to the limit of your skills in indefinite integrals and essentially help you to develop your skills as a crime scene investigator because you have to try everything and go outside the box in order to solve this problem. It's an indefinite integral of 5 e to the 2x power plus 4 e to the x divided by the quantity e to the 2x plus e to the x minus 2. So right off the bat, nothing looks like it's going to work. And in fact, I had to play around with this problem for about 10 minutes before I was able to finally solve it. So part of the message in solving these problems is do not give up. And unless there is evidence of your blood, sweat, and tears on the paper, you have not tried hard enough to solve the problem. Do not give up, because you will figure out a way to solve it, given enough time. Now, let's look at it and see if there's anything that we can use to our advantage here. The interesting thing is that we have an e to the 2x and an e to the x in the numerator and also in the denominator. So that's a clue that the two may somehow potentially be related. We have this minus 2 in the denominator. Let's look for a second. What if we were to let u equal this whole denominator? e to the 2x plus e to the x minus 2. Well, then du dx is going to be 2e to the 2x plus e to the x. So we're getting close to what's in the numerator. The problem is we have a 2 to 1 ratio, but here we have a 4 and a 5. Now, can we remedy that? Yes, in fact, we can. The thing to recognize is that this expression here is the same as saying 8e to the 2x plus 4e to the x. But then, since we want 5 and we have 3, we have to say minus 3e to the 2x. So if we add, essentially add 3 and subtract 3, we haven't changed the value of what we're dealing with, but it allows for the numerator, they have at least part of the numerator to conform to what the ratio is that we're looking for. And so now we can rewrite this equation and we can say that this is equal to the integral of minus 3 e to the 2x over that whole denominator plus, and here we have 8 and 4, we needed a 2 and 1, so this is obviously 4 times that. And this was u, so this whole thing becomes du. Now, integral du over u, I'm going to assume that you can do that, ln u, right? And then just put, in, put back in for u. So this part of the problem we've solved, and we've reduced it now. Well, have we actually helped ourselves out? That's, that's up for debate, especially when you're going through it the first time. But... We've eliminated the new part of the numerator. We're down to a minus 3e e to the 2x term. So potentially we've done something good. Now the question is, what are we going to do with that? Well, I'm going to run out of board space here pretty quickly, but let's analyze it a little bit more before I have to erase. So we've got this e to the 2x, e to the x, and a 2. So now. What if we were to try something else? Let's say let w equal e to the x. Then this denominator becomes w squared plus w minus 2, right? And the numerator becomes 3w squared. So now, have we helped ourselves out? Well, perhaps, because we can factor this. And this becomes w minus plus 2 times w minus 1, right? So potentially we could split it up and use partial fractions. But we have this w squared in the numerator. And what are we going to do with that? OK, so I actually had to just stop there for a second to make sure I wasn't screwing up the problem already. But I figured out we are not. So check this out. Now this is where, if you're sloppy and skip a step, you might make a mistake. So the problem is we, have, we would have a w squared in the top, right? If we just say w equals e to the x. But what we really have is e to the 2x dx. And so if we take our w term, let's recognize 
that if w equals e to the x, then dw dx is e to the x. So dw is e to the x dx. So instead of saying what we have here is 3 e to the 2x dx, what this really becomes is it's the same as saying 3 e to the x e to the x dx because 2x, we just add the exponents, x plus x is 2x. So then this is dw and we're left with this. So what we can then do is rewrite the equation and I'm going to rewrite it here then erase all this and start from a, a, a fresh board. We can say that this becomes the integral of minus 3w dw and let's just keep the factored form w plus 2 times w minus 1. Now we just have to use fr partial fractions to break this into two pieces and then we can solve it. Okay so now I erase the board to put what we want back up here so we have some space. So we solved part of the problem. We got that e to the x, 2x plus e to the x substitution and then it turned into an ln u over a du over u which is ln u. So this is what we're left with and we were able to make the replacement. Remember w is e to the x. And we reduced it to this. Now we have to use partial fractions. Remember some basic principles of algebra. a over b plus c does not equal a over b plus a over c, right? This is not true. Don't ever make that mistake. But a plus b over c is equal to a over c plus b over c. So we can split this up. This is the same as saying 3w is over this and we can split it into two pieces. And how do we do that? We have to solve for the coefficients. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let 3w over w plus 2 times w minus 1 equal a over w plus 2, let's say aw plus b over w minus 1. So we're using what's partial fraction. Since we have these w's and we want a w here, we have to have a w term and then we might have to have another term that's just a, a integer or a constant. So now we just have to solve for a and b and then we can do the integration because that's easy. So how do we do this? Well remember if we want to, when you combine, you have a over b plus c over d. To combine those you have to cross multiply, right? So we, move, we multiply this by d over d, we multiply this by b over b and then we get something over db. Well we're going to go in the reverse. So what we can say then is we're going to be multiplying this times w minus 1 over w minus 1 and this times w plus 2 over w plus 2, right? And as long as we multiply something by 1, we're good to go. We haven't changed the nature of the problem. So what we end up then is we say a, well actually we don't need the w huh? because we're going to get it out of this expression. So omit that w next to the a. We're going to say a times w minus 1 plus b times w plus 2 is going to equal to 3w because that's what we want to re represent. So now let's, let's expand this. We have aw minus a plus bw minus 2b equals 3w. So let's collect all the w terms. We have w times a plus b we got that one, we got that one, plus, and then we have minus a minus 2b, well I'm sorry, this is a plus, plus 2b equals 3w. So obviously if this is going to be true, then this expression, which has no w term, has to be 0, and this expression, which is what, what goes with the w term, has to be 3. So we can say that a plus b equals 3, but minus a plus 2b equals 0. From this expression then we can say that a equals 2b and then plug that into here we get a plus, so sorry, let's, let's not make any more mistakes, huh? So 2b plus b 
equals 3, 3b equals 3, b equals 1. Let me just double check this one second. All right, we're still good to go. So we decided that b is 1, therefore a is 2b, so a is going to be 2. So now we have our values for our partial fraction. Let me erase everything again. Okay, so now we're ready to solve it, finally. We can say that this is equal to, then, the integral of 2 over w plus 2 dw plus the integral of 1 over w minus 1 dw. And so each of these then becomes a logarithmic thing. So this is going to equal to 2 ln of w plus 2. Right, because if, this, if u is w plus 2, dw du is 1, plus the ln of w minus 1, plus c. And now we just have to plug in our w. Remember, w was e to the x. And then we have the second part of this problem. So you can see that this required a lot of outside-the-box thinking, which is typically what happens. You're really not playing calculus here anymore. You're really just playing... Sudoku or something like that. It's a game. You have to try different things, see what works. Do not give up. The keys to this problem were to recognize that 5 is the same as saying 8 minus 3. And that gave us a get out of jail free card so that our substitution and its derivative worked. And then we had to use partial fractions. So factoring and then using partial fractions to reduce it to a solvable problem. Okay, I hope this helps and keep on trucking.